Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we come together as God's family, let us acknowledge our failures and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. protector of those who hope in you. Without your womb, nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold it fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. 
Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you request. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there will, has never been anyone like you up till now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into a fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied then, every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, our today's theme for the first reading of the Gospel reading is the wisdom to choose. 
And I will begin in looking at Solomon, whom we heard from the first reading. Solomon was born to King David and Bathsheba in the year 990 before Christ in Jerusalem. He began his reign over Israel from 970 to 931 before Christ, the year of his death. He was 20 years old, 20 years old when he began his reign and was 59 years old when he died. So he ruled about 39 years. The reason for his today's request is this age because he felt that he was too young to govern his people. At the age of 20, he's very young. Now being given such a responsibility, he felt that he am unable to do this. The problem he had was how to discern between the good and the evil. That was his main concern. And so when God appeared to him in a dream and told him to ask whatever he liked and it will be granted to him, immediately Solomon did not ask for wealth, did not ask for health or victory over his enemies, but he felt he was too young and inexperienced to govern a great and numerous people, the Israelites. So he knew that a king could, make, could be misled by emotion, by passion, and could make serious mistakes by becoming friends with the unjust and unscrupulous. And therefore, he asked for wisdom. Wisdom to do what? To discern between the good and the bad. So as he may become a good king, a righteous king who will govern his people with goodness. God was so pleased and said to Solomon, I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you now and there will be nobody after you with such a wisdom. And what we know from the scriptures we consider Solomon to be the patron of wisdom. And that's why people from all over the world went to see Solomon to learn from his wisdom. And we know the good story of Queen of Sheba, who traveled over distances just to see and to hear and to seek wisdom from, from Solomon. The best known story of his wisdom is a judgment, is the judgment of Solomon of two women. Each lay a claim to be the mother of the same child. This was the first case whereby we see the application of Solomon's wisdom. These two women came forward and say they were claiming one child. Each one say, is my child. And now here what Solomon did. Solomon resolved the dispute by commanding the child to be cut in half and distributed between the two women. But one woman promptly renounced the claim, providing that she would rather give the child up to see than rather than to see this child being killed or being distributed into half. And so this woman showed compassion, and the wisdom of Solomon told him that this is the mother of this child, because there is no mother who will accept the child to be cut in, into half. And the other woman who said, well, let's cut the child in half, he said, no, this must not be your child. And that's how we see Solomon applying his wisdom immediately after the third chapter of this book. Solomon declared that this child was belonged to this woman because of the compassion this woman showed, and she was entitled the child. We pray for wisdom. We pray for wisdom in our lives that we may work for the kingdom of God. 
what we heard from the gospel reading, we need to sell all valuable things to find the kingdom as we hear from Matthew chapter 13. With these three parables today, we complete the chapter of Matthew chapter 13. We began two weeks ago. In three weeks, we have been reading from chapter 13. Now we complete that chapter. And in the completion of the chapter, we complete it with the three parables today. And I would just think of the, let's, let's reflect on the two parables. The parable of the treasure and the parable of the pearl. Of the pearl could, which could be classified as twins. Since they basically teach the same thing. And a man discovers a treasure, will he sell all what he owns to buy it? What is the story behind this? The time of Jesus, there were wars and invasions by the foreign armies. These were very frequent. So often people who had to flee from the danger. They would bury valuables in the field, hoping to recover them when the danger is past. But sometimes time go by and they will never come back to the land they owned. So the owners did not return and the fields were taken by, by other people. And at some point, some people will be walking around and will not something shining in the field. And they suspect that there might be valuable things in that field. So what it follows is the one who has seen it will go and sell everything so that he may buy the whole field, hoping that there is more things there. There is more precious stuff in there. And so when he buys the field, he wants to recover and to get more valuable stuff from the field. And so Jesus is comparing this with the kingdom of heaven whereby when we discover the kingdom of heaven, there is nothing more bigger than the kingdom. And so we have to do everything we can so that finally we may come to the end of the kingdom. We may come to the kingdom, we may possess the kingdom, we may be part and parcel of the kingdom. And that's the, that's the rationale towards, uh, from, this, from, this, from these parables. Wisdom to be ready to choose the valuable things in our lives. And there is nothing more valuable than working for the kingdom. As soon as we discover this important treasure, we sell everything, we throw out everything so that we may remain focused for this kingdom. So today we ask the good Lord to grant us wisdom as we work towards the kingdom, we may eliminate all the things that may not lead us to the kingdom. That's the first thing we pray to the Lord. But also, we ask the good Lord to grant us the wisdom in our age today, especially to be positive. If you go to the media, if you meet people, it's all about negativity. And with this negativity going on, we cannot grow in our spiritual life. We cannot work seriously for the kingdom. So the wisdom we ask today is to be positive. You know, you believe that there will be a good day tomorrow, apart from all what's going on. To believe that this pandemic will come to an end and you have a new beginning. To believe that, you know, that's the positive mind. To believe that all God is calling us and you have to be positive. There is so much negativity everywhere in our lives. You know, we meet people are all complaining. Everybody is complaining and complaining. We cannot work for the kingdom while complaining. The wisdom is to ask to be positive in our lives. May God bless us, grant us wisdom to work for the kingdom. Amen. Let us stand up to proclaim our faith. I believe in one God. Make of heaven, heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things you are made, for us many for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified, he had a Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose he again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one called Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, as we come before you to our humble hearts, we kindly ask you to listen to our prayers. For the entire church, to seek first the kingdom of God in all that they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations to seek the wisdom of Solomon as they legislate for their people's good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of life from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families to be confronted in the image of Jesus for the betterment of the entire world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are afflicted by any type of disease, particularly all those affected by the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved departed, that they may enjoy the vision of God's faith for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ron Mora, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, teach us your wisdom that in seeking the kingdom, we always work for the betterment of our communities. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name for our good, good and good of all his holy church. Accept, your Lord, we pray, the offerings which you bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our turn our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, your Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the, the, through him, the host of angels, your adorers, your majesty, and rejoice us in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in the one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make it holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took a bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when suppose he ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that our held us worthy to be in our presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and you bring out the fullness of charity together, Prince our Pope, and David our Bishop, his assistant William, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them the light of your face. How may so now as well we pray that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be Christ in our life and may praise and go for you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O oh God, your Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and the honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and followed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, thy will be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace as you grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. pray. 
We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The distribution of the Holy Communion will follow immediately after this Holy Mass. There will be two stations, one here and the other one at the back of the church. May God bless you and I wish you a blessed Sunday. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.